Welcome to as important a night as there is on the sports calendar. This is the 2019 Jimmy B Classic presented by Corona. We are here inside Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena here in Midtown Manhattan for a great doubleheader of basketball. That's the fun part, but we are here most importantly for the 25th consecutive year with the Jimmy B Classic to honor the legacy of Jim Valvano in his fight and all of our fight against cancer. We have a doubleheader coming up for you tonight. You know Louisville and Texas Tech in game one. A couple of iconic programs in the second game tonight who have combined to win nine national championships. A couple of fiery coaches, Indiana and UConn, still to come in game two. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. Very glad you are with us on this all-important night. We're going to enjoy some basketball, and we're going to raise some money as well. And we've got the number one team in the nation right now, 9-0, undefeated, the Louisville Cardinals here in the first game. And Louisville, Dan, has everything. They're an older team. They're excellent defensively, and they can score from a variety of positions, including inside. They're going to look to punch the ball inside, and they've got a superstar in Jordan Wara, who's averaging over 21 points per game. And Texas Tech 5 and 3 under Chris Beer. They have lost their last three, two of them in overtime. And of course, Jay Aran all the way to overtime of the national championship game a year ago. Well, Texas Tech is younger and they are smaller. But this is a team, it'd be a mistake to think that Texas Tech cannot win this game. They're on a three game slide. They lost their leading scorer, Jemias Ramsey, who's not going to play in this game because of a hamstring injury. But they can still win. This is a team that can defend, they can rebound but they're going to have to find other ways to score than without Ramsey. Such an important night, as we mentioned, and we couldn't be happier for many, many reasons to have Holly Rowe with us tonight. Holly. Thank you so much. Well, Texas Tech had such a special season last year, making it all the way to the national championship game. And for many reasons, that run started right here in this building when a very young Texas Tech team went to the wire with Duke and were competitive against that great Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett team. Chris Beard said one of the only times we've lost a game and actually gotten a standing ovation from the people who are here around the court. They put, took that momentum and that propelled them to a special season. But guys, only three players who played in that game here in the Garden a year ago are playing tonight. They have their work cut out for them. They'll see if they can propel to something else special this year. Holly, thank you. They sure do. But last year's game was mentioned at today's shoot around. It is on the minds of the coaching staff of the Red Raiders. Our officials, Doug Sermons, Michael Stevens, Mike Roberts. This is V Week on ESPN, the Jimmy V Classic here with the Garden. You can donate now at V.org slash donate. The Cardinals in white, the Red Raiders in red. And we are ready for the first of two here at Madison Square Garden. Well, Dan, you mentioned that. It was talked about that game last year that Holly Road just spoke of with Texas Tech when they got the standing O. There's a little high low immediately Louisville going inside where they have the advantage and they're trying to take advantage of it. But Chris Beard asked his team, how hard are you willing to play? We have to play as hard as we've ever played to be able to win this game against Louisville. And one thing they're going to have to do, as you mentioned, there's an advantage inside for Enoch and Louisville. Texas Tech doesn't really have anybody who can match up size-wise with Enoch who is one of three fifth-year seniors in the starting lineup for this very good and very experienced Louisville team. Well, Enoch is having a terrific year. He's moving better. He's defending far better than he did last year. He's a transfer from UConn, averaging over 11 points a game and over seven rebounds a game. And he's going to be a big factor in this game because I think Louisville is going to be going high-low all game long. And there you see the deep freshman class, and there are some good ones, but also five seniors, and four of them are in their fifth year. Three starters and one grad transfer in Fresh Kimball who will come off the bench. And Louisville needs to look into Enoch right away because he's got T.J. Holyfield 6'8 on his back. He's running the floor effectively. They're going to get something early because of that. Darius Perry launches a three. And down with the rebound is Chris Clark, the grad transfer from Virginia Tech, one of the most unique players in the nation. Looks to pass way more than he looks to shoot. And the three spins around and out for T.J. Holyfield. 
P.J. Holyfield started off the season so strong. He had 56 points in his first three games, but over the next five, only 25 points total. Best player on the floor, Jordan Wara. He misses the three. Offensive rebound, Enoch. Slips inside with a left hand, and he's got all four. Boy, what a beautiful move. Great pivot by Steven Enoch after the offensive rebound. That's where T.J. Holyfield has to stay between Enoch and the basket. It wasn't about blocking the shot. It's about keeping him from the rim. Here's another good look by Clark, but another missed jumper by Holyfield, who's had a couple of good looks already. Well, Holyfield has to score if Texas Tech is going to win this game. Two guys have to score, Holyfield and Clark. And Wara fouled on the drive. So a very good start here for the Cardinals. After the offensive rebound, this is a terrific job of feeling where the defender was, Holyfield. He was on his left shoulder, and Enoch just took him into the lane a little bit. It wasn't quite a drop step. It was more of a pivot to get around him. And I think Holyfield's got to do a better job of, of walling up and moving his feet. And Jay, a minute and 35 seconds in, Terrence Shannon Jr. has already picked up two fouls. But he is staying in. Holyfield is the guy who is coming out. But now I think it, it'll be Shannon because Avery Benson is coming in. And this is a really unfortunate development for Texas Tech. Shannon is a very talented freshman out of Chicago, and he's already picked up two. Yeah, he's a lefty, and he had 24 points and eight rebounds against DePaul and was one of the best players on the floor in that last game they played. Texas Tech won its first five. They had lost their last three, and I think all three officials blew their whistles and signaled travel at exactly the same time there on Perry. Well, a good job by Avery Benson defensively to stay in front of Darius Perry. Avery Benson plays basketball like they're not going to ever let him play again after tonight. He gives everything he has on every possession. Last three games, again, two of them, as Jay mentioned, without Jemias Ramsey their leading score and he missed part of the the third game as well and their last two losses both came in overtime against Creighton and DePaul so yeah they've lost three in a row but Chris Beard says I still believe in who we are I still think we can get where we want to get even though the record doesn't look all that shiny right now. well they ran a terrific set there where Davide Moretti was down on the baseline and ran a, a nice little flex cut and then did a great job to kick the ball out to Avery Benson, the lefty who was wide open for a shot. Now take a look here along the baseline. You're going to see a screen right here and off of it. And then as soon as the ball's caught, two defenders converge, and then they kick it right out to Benson. That's really good offense along the baseline. That's called a flex cut. First time that these two programs have ever met, and Texas Tech looking for its first ever win against the AP top-ranked team in the nation. They are 0-6 all-time. Four of those six coming against Kansas. Baseline drive and the kick. Benson the extra pass to Moretti. Good pass. Edwards, a little bit strong, and McMahon will intentionally tip it off to a teammate. Well, Tyler Edwards didn't get that to go down, but that was good offense. This is a team that runs a ton of motion, so there's a lot of down screen, back screen, fade screen action. Warren misses the three in the corner, down with the rebound is Clark, and this is what he can do. He can get the board, he can bring it up the floor, and he can make a play at the other end. A point forward, and Chris Clark has got to be a scorer in this game. Now, early on, Louisville has been settling for jump shots. They got to punch the ball inside, play inside out. They're going out of a little horn set to start. And I think they're going to go high low here. There it goes. Laura looking inside for Enoch and an offensive foul using that left arm to try to get some room. That's all about fighting to get around in front. And Chris Clark is leading this team in assists. He averages about six assists per game. Looked like a, it might be a handoff, but he's just able to get around the bigger. Stephen Enoch get all the way to the basket. I think Chris Clark has got to have his best scoring game in order for Texas Tech to win against the number one Louisville Cardinals here in the Garden. And Clark will get a breather as Chris Beard goes a little bit deeper into his bench right now. And as Kevin McCullough, a redshirt freshman from San Antonio, checks into the game. And we see Malik Williams in for Enoch for Louisville. Malik Williams, the better defender. He can get on guard ball screen. He's got a, a great sense for how to guard, both on the perimeter and inside. There, there he cuts off the drive. Terrific work. And Holyfield called for the trail. And, and you have to credit Malik Williams for that. That was great movement by a big guy to get down along the baseline and cut off that drive, get back to his man, then force a turnover. That was great defense by Malik Williams. He's only been active for five games, and he was out 
for the start of the season. Who knows, he might even be starting this year but for that injury, but he's coming off a really good game. He had a double-double against Pittsburgh. I think he had 13 and 11. Played it really, really well. And right foot injury was out about eight weeks. Returned November the 20th. Good pass. He, he can shoot the three a little bit, too. Now Wara down in the post. And draws the foul. Our first media time out of the night. Game one of two here at the Jimmy V Classic at Madison Square Garden. The Red Raiders with an early one-point lead. Instead of a travel site, and you'll experience a whole new range of emotions. Like the relaxing feeling of knowing you're getting the best price. And the magic power of unlocking your room with your phone. I can read minds, too. Really? really? Book at Hilton.com and get the Hilton price match guarantee. And Doug. Number 36 of the stakeout. As soon as the homeowners arrive, we'll inform them that Liberty Mutual customizes home insurance. So they'll only pay for what they need. Your turn to keep watch, Lima. You wake me up if you see anything. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Two pure beef patties, three slices of melty cheese. Biggie cheese? Oh, yeah. Hey, man, do you need help getting out of that thing? Oh, yeah. Hey, here, me, um... I'm not even sure how I got in, man. Motor in for a Biggie cheese before they're gone. And order ahead to try happy hour anytime. Are you ready for Monday night? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Corona Extra, Find Your Beach, and in part by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. Welcome back to the Garden. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, and once again, Holly Rowe. For Texas Tech, Chris Beard was so honored to play in this Jimmy V Classic, but one thing he quickly realized is none of the kids on his team remember Jimmy V. They weren't born when he was still coaching, so he gave Terrence Shannon, one of the freshmen on the team, an assignment. He had to do a report. It was an oral report that he had to stand up in front of the entire team with a PowerPoint presentation and everything, so he had to talk about who was Jim Valvano. He had done such great research, he talked about that Houston was the number one seed and that it was an upset. And all of this really brought it to the forefront to these kids that this was a coach, this was someone who impacted college basketball and has also impacted so many, million, uh, so many millions of people. And he told me yesterday, Terrence did, that hey, over $170 million had been raised by the Jimmy B Foundation. So I love that he did that piece of research as well. Uh, very cool stuff and really part of the family atmosphere that you can't help but pick up on when you watch Texas Tech practice. And Jim Valvano, for other folks who may be too young to remember, born in Queens, played at Rutgers, and a head coach for a long time, most notably 1983 when NC State, when the Wolfpack beat Houston, beat Phi Slamma Jamma to win the national championship. And Jay, wouldn't you say one of the bigger upsets we've seen in our lifetimes in the NCAA tournament? It may be in, in a final, the biggest yeah. upset ever. I mean, it was voted the, the top game of the 20th century in uh, in college basketball, and rightfully so. I mean, it was an amazing. I, I don't know how many people had NC State and the points in that one. Houston loaded with future pros, including Akeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, and NC State won a very close, low-scoring game. Got a moving screen there, called on a Holyfield to turn it back over to the Cardinals. Well, you are going to get a lot of screening action when you play against Texas Tech. That down screen, back screen, fade screen action. This is the really tough stuff, is when you're going with dribble handoffs. Once you hand it off, you have to stay stationary. So the referees ring you up all the time. It's almost like, like calling charges for them. They love it. Dwayne Sutton lost it, got it back, and lays it in. And a guy who does a little bit of everything for Louisville extends the lead to three. The most relentless player in college basketball. And 
Here he is with a rebound. He can do this as well. He can score. He can dish. And unfortunately for him, just got called for an offensive foul. Told you they like calling those. What would you teach players? It's three on two. You're going to kick. How do you slow that momentum down before you run into a defender who's really setting you up? You have to use the free throw. And that was that wasn't a charge. I mean, you have to use the free throw line as a stop sign, basically. So come down, come to a two footed jump stop and then dish the ball. Because if you if you let your momentum carry you in, you know, you're going to you're going to have somebody step in front of you and, and go down. I mean, there wasn't enough contact really for that, but but the referees fall for that every time. And that's why this, this new flop rule is so ridiculous, because you have to fall down in order to get a charge. They never call it on the same contact if you don't go down. Boy, good D here by Louisville. Texas Tech unable to get a clean look. Clark will settle for a three and come up empty. Boy, Louisville has played great defense this season. The way they stifled Michigan was incredibly impressive. Good pass. And a good extra pass to Wara in the corner. And he extends the lead to six. Now, Sutton probably had the better shot but he threw it to the better shooter being Jordan Wara and when Wara gets going from the three-point line that's when he can have really big nights how about Wara 46 percent from three on the season coming into the game tonight better than 21 points per game without question one of the best players in the country well he hadn't had a game under 17 all year good pass and another offensive foul Benson steps in it's a charge on Wara We've had more charges in this game than any games first three, three seconds. That's great passing And I, I thought that Sutton had a really good shot there But he knew that he had a better right in the shooting pocket for a catch-and-shoot Jordan Wara is averaging close to 22 points a game. He has not had less than 17 in a game I mean, He's been incredibly consistent and he can score inside outside he can post Really a terrific player. Best of the waters after his sophomore season was told by NBA folks, come back, work on your defense. Louisville staff says he's defending much better this year. There's never been any question the last couple of years about his play at the offensive end. Boy, another terrific job by Malik Williams to help on the ball screen, then recover. And now looking for it inside over Savrasov. And Savrasov is called for the foul. Really good pass. Savrasov got on the high side of Malik Williams. There was nobody there for weak side help. And the pass was thrown so only Williams could get it. Just really well done. Not enough pressure on the on the passer. Could just throw right over the top and Williams went right up. I thought that was a good block, but really good pass to get it inside. So Williams getting a lot of minutes in the early going and playing well off the bench for Chris Matt. Saturday on ESPN and the ESPN app. We've got a great men's college basketball doubleheader It'll be number 13 Memphis number 19 Tennessee No love lost between those two programs three o'clock Eastern time and then number eight Kentucky You'll be in Lexington Jay as they host the Yellow Jackets at a rubber arena but Kentucky's starting to play better and better John Calipari talking to his team about one of, you know two words they're emphasizing fight and finish E.J. Montgomery had a terrific game his last one at 25. Another contest inside. Offensive rebound by Holyfield, who's checked back into the game. Great cut, great find, and the bucket for Kevin McCullough. What a feed by Holyfield. And, and the cut was fantastic. A lot of players would just stand after that offensive rebound, but instead McCullough cut straight to the basket and got an easy one out of it. That was just a really heady cut. Ryan McMahon with a nice look. Williams juggled on the catch, couldn't get the three off. You have to stay down. Louisville throws up a lot of shot fakes and ball fakes. You got to stay down on those. Samuel Williamson, freshman at McDonald's All-American, puts up an air ball. Back comes Clark. Edwards knocks it down. Little run here for the Red Raiders. Great pass by Chris Clark, passing ahead in order to get a shot before the Louisville defense could get set up. And Texas Tech is going to have to continue to do that in order to play ahead of Louisville's defense. If they got to grind it out five on five all game long, that's advantage Louisville. That was not a good shot by Warren. You mentioned Clark averaging about six assists per game. Just picked up his first tonight. Drive it. Instead, Edwards again. Knocks down another one, and this one's a three to tie the game. And how about this 7-0 run by Texas Tech? Six straight double-figure games for Kyler Edwards. 
He is mostly a catch and shoot guy, but he can bounce it as well. Fresh Kimball misses on the layup, and back come the Red Raiders. McCullough. Oh, what a play by Kimball. That saved a bucket there to take that away from behind. And now numbers for Louisville. Laura spins. Tough shot. Won't go down. Boy, McCullough did a great job with sense of urgency to get to the baseline to cut off that drive. Another turnover. Wara again. McMahon shooting 50% from three this year. Misses that one. He never misses those. There needs to be some sort of investigation. <laughs> Ryan McMahon missed an open three. That never happens. A great basket cut for Texas Tech. And then Clark getting the ball down court, playing ahead of the defense to get the ball to Kyler Edwards. And then Edwards with a little fade off the terrific screen by Holyfield. Texas Tech starting to knock down shots. Check out Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's for great gifts, including thousands of sale items, like White River flannel sheet sets starting at under $20, and the new Bass Pro Rhino 4x4 RC truck for under $50, plus free two-day shipping. Christmas trees try so hard. Lights, ornaments, and little choo-choo drains, come on. The best trees, they kind of only need two things. Peanut butter and chocolate. Not sorry, Reese's. I am an Instagram boyfriend, but now that rolled chicken tacos are back at Taco Bell... Sun's had hard hands! My hands are tied. Let's just enjoy this moment. Take the picture! Rolled chicken tacos are back, with your choice of dips, only at Taco Bell. Hey, Coach Mack here. Uh, who hasn't been affected by cancer? Uh, it's a terrible disease that uh, seems like every family in the country uh, has to deal with at some time or another. You know, it's been personal to me over the last several months. My dad has gone through a cancer scare himself. Uh, fortunately, he's doing well. Uh, his brother, however, Dan Mack, uh, passed away a couple of years ago and uh, uh, incredibly emotional just thinking about it. And just to see what that disease does to um, families and uh, tears them apart. So anything that we can do to fund cancer research, uh, spread awareness, uh, and get rid of this terrible disease uh, would certainly be awesome. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Well, it's something that has touched everybody in one form or another. I know my dad is watching it back home. He's a cancer survivor and so grateful to still have him with us and, and watching tonight and uh, this is we mentioned it's a special night on the ESPN calendar Jim Valvano of course part of the ESPN family toward the, uh, towards the end of his life and, and that speech that he gave Jay more than 25 years ago is as relevant and well known today as it was back in 1993 when he made it and we've seen it every year since and you never get tired of seeing it it's an extraordinary extraordinary speech Louisville in this game, Dan, needs to take better shots. Their so a shot selection has not been as good as they need it to be, and they're not getting the ball into the paint as much as they need to get it. And right now, this is a team in Texas Tech that is on a roll. That was a really good cut off the double screen. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Listening in to Louisville coach Chris Mack in that last time out, he talked to his team about the charges that Texas Tech is drawing, and he said, you know, we talked about this. We know they like to do that. Come to a full stop. Be careful with what you're doing there. And then he told them to just relax. He said, we need better shot selection. Be strong with the ball, but really warning his guys. I think Texas Tech already has three charges so far. Get to a stop. Don't let them draw you into that. Thank you, Holly. And speaking of people who have fought the fight, Holly Rowe has fought the fight. Uh, and very publicly at times and thrilled to have her working the games with us here tonight. I know Holly has spoken about this on, uh, on the air, on Twitter, and, and so forth. 
And just another aspect of how the B Foundation is saving lives. Tied at 12, nine minutes in here in the Garden. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Road, Dick Vitale in the second game tonight as Indiana takes on UConn. Louisville has missed its last five field goal attempts. The screen for the screener action. Darius Perry was open, but winds up taking a really tough shot. Talk about a tough two. This is just really poor shot selection by Louisville. And Chris Mack, after that shot, just looked down at his bench as if to say, who can I put in there who might take a higher percentage shot than the guys who are in the game right now. And he probably was saying, didn't we just talk about this? Texas Tech very mentally tough. They play with a chip on their shoulder. Obviously a very different team than the group that took Virginia to overtime in the national championship game a year ago. Shannon back in there with two fouls, misses a corner three. And Shannon not only can score and shoot, but he can put the ball on the deck. So Louisville's got to be alert to get a charge on him, see if they can pick up his third. But you can most likely get it on the offensive end with him. Good matchup between a couple of really talented freshmen. Shannon for the Red Raiders and Williamson for the Cardinals. Shot clock running down. Perry the kick. Williamson the drive. A little off balance as he puts it up. And yet another rebound for Chris Clark, his seventh already tonight. And he can rebound, then rip and go by himself. He doesn't have to outlet it because he's essentially the point guard out on the floor. Off balance, Shannon, no. Enoch kept it alive, and here come the Cardinals, led by Williamson. And Shannon tried to go after, knock that rebound away. That's one where you could pick up a cheap one if you're not careful. David Johnson is in the game right now for the Cardinals. Number 13 in white, 6'5 freshman from Louisville. And an Aaron pass will give it right back over to Texas Tech. And now Coach Mack is just shaking his head back and forth. He is not happy right now. This week, our NBA Wednesday doubleheader features some of the NBA's top teams. How about this matchup in Toronto tomorrow night? Kawhi Leonard, who led the Raptors to a championship a year ago, is back in Toronto to take on Pascal Siakam of the Raptors. And then... Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. How good of a season are they having as they host New Orleans? Both games available on ESPN and the ESPN app. But Chris Mack can't be happy with Stephen Enoch, the way he handled that double team that came out of it. It was not a strong double, and he just threw the ball away, picked up his dribble instead of dribbling out of it, and just tossed it out of bounds. Davide Moretti with a turnover for Texas Tech to give it back to Louisville. Stopping on a dime is Perry, but another tough shot. And then a challenge at the rim by the seven-footer, the freshman from Cameroon, Russell Chiwa. They need some minutes out of him tonight. Well, stopping on a dime was impressive, but taking a bad shot that wasn't worth a nickel, was it? And that, that's another, another instance of taking a tough two when it wasn't called for. Get the ball inside. You know, run something first, but it, it play inside out. Aiden Igyehan, a freshman from Dublin, Ireland, is in the game right now for Louisville. He goes after the rebound, but Chiwa holds him off. Those are a couple of big bodies in Igyehan and Chiwa. Yeah, Chiwa gave a great block out. Clean look, Edwards. Followed by Benson. Somehow it goes, and the Red Raiders take the lead. You know, right now, Dan, Texas Tech is just playing harder. And Benson, that's an example. Nobody blocks him out. He's a lefty. He tipped that in with his left hand because he was just playing hard. Now he's got Benson's guarding Wara. And he's face guarding and won't let Wara get the ball. Avery Benson, a red shirt sophomore from Arkansas. The shot goes up. Everybody turns and watches. Nobody lays a body on him. Wouldn't you like to flex like that if you had those guns? <laughs> Wouldn't you like that? I would like it. She wanted to move someplace warm. But he wanted snow for the holidays. So we built a snow globe. We'll get that later. But the one thing we could both agree on was getting Geico to help with our homeowner's insurance. What? Switching and saving was really easy. I love you! Sweetie, hands off the glass. Ugh. Call Geico and see how easy saving on homeowners and condo insurance can be. I love her! 
switch to Boost Mobile and get more. Like four lines for $25 per line per month, plus unlimited gigs. So the music never stops. Switch and get four lines for $25 per line per month, plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. Introducing Wendy's 2 for 5. The only 2 for 5 with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any two for five bucks. Only at Wendy's. At Hertz, we know that a change of scenery shouldn't mean a change in standards. That's why, thanks to you, we're rated number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power. Award-winning green olives. Quality you can enjoy. Firm, round, and so delicious, they'll be the highlight of every recipe. Goya Green Olives. Real quality for real-life chefs. If it's Goya, it has to be good. survival odds and the reason why there's survival odds is because someone beat it we need your help don't give up don't ever give up so don't give up on me the 25th annual jimmy v classic and we urge you to do whatever you can do v.org slash donate well, we got some celebrities in the crowd, most notably perhaps Bill Murray. And if you're not familiar, you're saying, what in the world is Bill Murray doing at a college basketball game in New York City here in December? Well, his son is an assistant on the Louisville staff. There is Luke Murray. So you'll often see Bill at Louisville Cardinal games. Most most people would answer with Carl Spackler and uh, Caddyshack, but what, what would you say is Bill Murray's best work? Most? Stripes, I mean, Stripes hit me at that impressionable age. Right? Stripes was really 42? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good guess by you. What about you? It's Groundhog Day. Ground, yeah. I loved him in Groundhog Day. Everything he does, I love. He's but. great. And as nice as can be to yeah. people who come, you know, he's got to get a lot of people yelling at him on the street. And, Little triple screen. Boy, Clark's wide open. There it is. Moretti finds Clark. Can't get the shot off. Back to Moretti. Nice little fake on Johnson. Tough floater. Four-point lead. Red Raiders. This is just a hard-playing Texas Tech team. And when Jemias Ramsey gets back, I mean, he is a... He's leading him in scoring his 17 points. This is going to be a top-10 team again. A freshman out with a hamstring injury. He's coming along, but they want to be cautious with him. They don't want to have him aggravate the injury and then lose him for six or eight weeks. So as much as Chris Beard would love to have him in there, he's got to go without him right now. Well, he's just a man. I mean, he can take over games. Mentioned that he leads Texas Tech in scoring at 17 a game, also six rebounds, but he can he's a three-level scorer. He can put it on the deck. And uh, Chris Beard says he's just a, he's a great young man. He says he has no vices. I was like, well, who wants to hang around with him then? <laughs> He's no fun. <laughs> uh, first points for when Louisville. When he gets some, have him call me. Right, right. <laughs> first points for Louisville, or first point for Louisville in over six minutes, and it's from Ryan McMahon, the fifth-year senior out of Sarasota, who year by year has worked himself into a bigger role. He is now starting and averaging 30 minutes per game for the number one team of the nation. He is defending much better. He's gotten stronger, and there's never been any doubt about his shooting ability. Here's that same thing they scored on, that little flex cut out of the horn set they started. Now they're just running baseline screens. Good matchup here, Clark and Wara. Good defense by Wara to move his feet and cut off the baseline. And Holyfield needs help. Good defense by Williams. Clark will put it up and knock down a long two. Boy, Wara did such a good job defensively, and he just let up at the end. You know, he should have been right with Clark. Clark was able to easily get into that shot without putting the ball in the deck. The quote from shoot around today is that they are begging Clark to look to score a little bit more. As great of a passer as he is, they need offense from anybody they can find it. And now, a little miscommunication, a mishandling of the ball, and it's out of bounds back to Louisville. Now, Wara did such a great job to cut off the baseline. 
but see how he just kind of lets up here and, and stands up and he's not there on the catch. And that allows Clark to just get right into his shot right at the end of a clock. If you're right with him, make him put it on the deck, maybe get a shot clock violation and another turnover. Rush Kimball, grad transfer from St. Joseph's, backup point guard, jumper over Benson, no good. And call the foul on Is Holyfield. it on Holyfield? Yeah. yeah. Is that number two on Holyfield, I believe? This a little discard. He thought he was being held, and so he responded. So two on Holyfield. Looks like he's going to come back out. Two on Shannon. Without their leading score in Ramsey, as you get another look. A little shove there. Yeah, when you usually on a quick block out, what a lot of a lot of coaches teach now is is what Michigan State does, which they call it hit, find, and fetch. They don't even you know kind of turn and put their back into you. They just they just go into you, knock you back, and then turn, find the ball, and go get it. But right under the basket, the referee's standing right there. They usually don't call block out stuff because it's, it's going on all over the floor. It's difficult to call. A reminder, we've got another game coming up for you tonight. It'll be Indiana and UConn. The Hoosiers are 8-1 and one, coming off their only loss. Uh, they lost up at Madison to Wisconsin in their last game. UConn is 6-2. and two. Archie Miller, Danny Hurley. We talk about intense guys coaching those two programs, Jim. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of prowling of the sideline. And I think dry cleaners get rich off coaches like those two. Now that Gary Williams is no longer <laughs> at Maryland. Yes, no longer the clubhouse they leader. Need, yeah, they needed somebody to step forward. Well, don't knock Buzz Williams off that pedestal so quickly. Sabrasov with a corner three. A redshirt freshman from St. Petersburg, Russia. One of four international players on this Texas Tech roster. Just a terrific baseline drive and then a baseline drift. Whenever there's a baseline drive, if you can get to the opposite baseline, you're going to have a great chance for a, a quick shot. And a travel is the call on Wara. Now take a look at this baseline drive. And then watch on the other side. While this drive goes along the baseline, there was a nice little drift into the corner. Now Malik Williams probably should have gotten that pass. But that's a, a terrific pass by Davide Moretti because he kept his dribble. A lot of times guys will pick up their dribble when they get that resistance, but ever since Steve Nash did it with the Suns taking it all the way to the other side of the basket, guys are keeping their dribble alive, and that's a really smart thing to do. Jay, we Pass. played almost 14 and a half minutes, and Louisville has three field goals, and for the second time tonight, Benson, a 6-4 guard, gets to the offensive glass. So, Texas Tech decided to go pick and pop with Savrasov because he was hot knocked out that down and then nobody blocks out Benson he winds up getting fouled by Dwayne Sutton now he goes to the line for two just a great gritty play by Avery Benson the lefty and we told you near the top of the show that he plays like they're never gonna let him play again so he gets everything uh, out of every moment that he is in the game and his minutes have really spiked with Ramsey injured and he's making the most of it well, he had a terrific game against DePaul he had six points five rebounds and just like this game, just plays so hard. It's almost like he shames his teammates to joining him and how hard he plays. Overtime loss to DePaul their last time out. Overtime loss to Creighton. Blue Jays are good. Really good. Uh, DePaul's good, too. I mean, those are two road overtime losses without Ramsey. So, yeah, they're 5-3, and three, but could easily be 7-1 and one and probably ranked. They were ranked last week. Yeah, DePaul's got Charlie Moore, who transferred in from Kansas. Paul Reed, and then Jalen Coleman lands from Illinois, who... Hit that three that wound up tying the game, sent it to overtime. McMahon, no. Savrasov a rebound. Chris Mack probably can't believe what he's seen so far tonight. Well, he's seen a lot of quick shots and not making Texas Tech guard like they should. And the ball is not going inside. Now, you credit Texas Tech's defense, but Louisville's contributing to some of their offensive issues because they are not doing a good job. Boy, great feed from Edwards to Moretti, and the lead continues to grow for the underdog here at the Garden. Davide Moretti never stopped moving. He curled those screens by the elbows and just kept moving, and the ball found him. The ball finds the most active player, and Davide Moretti was the most active player in the motion offense. Here's Moretti there, and he, he couldn't even stay in the circle. He was moving so hard.
that we were playing around today. It's Christmas morning. Let's go. Riders around the world, let's create some magic. We rise in three, two, one. Our kind of joy feels different. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. Texas Tech, without question, the underdog here tonight to the number one team of the nation, Louisville. Texas Tech leading by nine, not to get ahead of ourselves, and we all know that the rankings are going to you know, move wildly this season. There seems to be so much parity. Michigan State started the year as number one. They lost their opener. Kentucky moved to number one. They got beat at home by Evansville. Duke became number one. They got beat at home by Stephen F. Austin. Now Louisville is number one for just the third time, incidentally, in program history. As great a program and a legacy as the Cardinals have. And they're down by nine to Texas Tech. And it's not that Louisville's defense hasn't been good. They've done a pretty good job defensively. I mean, so far they've held Texas Tech to just 25 points. But Louisville's offense has been anemic. They've had some turnovers. They've made some questionable decisions. But especially they have taken some questionable shots. And out of a timeout, you think they're going to be a little more focused to get the ball inside. There's a screen by McMahon to screen Enoch into the low post. A terrific screen. Triple teamed, and he scores anyway. And that's the first field goal in the last 12 attempts for Louisville. That was McMahon just giving a little diagonal up screen for Enoch. And that's a little on big screen. It really forces Texas Tech to have to switch that screen. Three won't go for Edwards. And Saversov is called for the foul. There is plenty of time left in this first half for Louisville to make a move. Now take a look at McMahon here. He's going to come up and he's going to set a going to set a screen up here for Enoch. Enoch's going to come off that screen. Then it winds up getting a switch. So now you got Davide Moretti guarding a big guy and force that switch. Now they had three guys come over. It was not an easy shot but at least it got the ball inside to a big guy where they have an advantage. You know, it's funny, on the very first possession of the game, they went inside to Enoch, and he scored easily, and they just kind of went away from it after that. Yeah, it's, and, and look, Texas Tech did a good job defensively, but if you are resolute to get the ball inside, you're going to be able to do it. It's not that hard. And I think Chris Mack is going to be pounded on his team to make better decisions on the shots they take. It's not like the shots they've taken they cannot make. But you're taking an awful lot of tough twos, and the ball wasn't moving, and they weren't forcing Texas Tech to guard for extensive uh, extended periods. And, and as we mentioned, especially for a high major team, this is about as experienced a group as you'll have. In the game right now, three fifth-year seniors and two juniors. Clark has Williams on him, and I think he can drive this matchup and should. More ready for three. You know, in some ways, Louisville's fortunate to be as close as they are because Texas Tech has had some pretty good looks, especially by Moretti, that haven't gone down. Right back into Enoch, and he gets a very favorable bounce. Oh, and left-handed jump hook. Really soft shot, but I still think Enoch could have powered that to the bucket. He had McCuller on him. That is, that is a great advantage for him. Good call by the official here because it, the cutters are getting bumped and chucked and held all over the place. That's the first time they've called it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by TGI Fridays. $12 endless apps are back all day, every day. That cloud right there look like a penguin. Really? That looks exactly like a busted pipe spewing water everywhere. Can you just stop being an insurance agent for like two seconds? It's my job to think about these things. Well, what does that cloud look like? That looks just like your house. 
that's being burglarized. They're stealing your TV right there. Oh, and right there, it's a bear destroying your car. You need a vacation soon, very soon. You, you know, Chris, some of us don't have an off season. LSU, Justin Fields, Ohio State, Jalen Hurts, Oklahoma, Chase Young, Ohio State. The Heisman Trophy Ceremony, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. Texas Tech leads Louisville 25-21. Number one team in the country on the ropes a little bit right now. Part of the reason is look at this Texas Tech huddle. Chris Beard is one of the best culture coaches in America. There's only three kids returning to this team that were not with them last year playing in this game at Madison Square Garden, and he wants them to be connected. You could see in that huddle where every single person who's involved in the huddle is touching each other. He wants them connected. Look at this turnover of the roster. It's just unbelievable to me. One of the other reasons they're playing very well together, they got there early in June. They had an early foreign trip to the Bahamas in August. So this group has been together for a long time, and they are playing much more connected than they otherwise would have been. Yeah, and the speech of the end. Thank you, Holly. The speech of the end of shoot around today to the group today was this is where it started last year. We got the respect of the country last year. Let's get the respect of the country again this year. And man, did they ever get the respect of the country last year coming that close to winning the national championship 31 wins Big 12 regular season champs and again took Virginia to overtime in the national championship game. but they lost a lot yes. and and this is still a very very young team uh, they lost you know Jared Culver who was the Big 12 player of the year going with a little two three zone right now but it can morph into man and goes right into man they give that look, but then they move back to man-to-man. -to -man. A young team and a small team for the most part as well. In and out for Wara. Wara now one for seven, five points in the first half. Good drive, but I thought Wara should have gone right into the body of Benson. Clark with fading away. Sorry, Jay. Clark with McMahon on him, calling for the ball, but he kicked it back out. Yeah, he should have shot that. They don't take advantage of the mismatch. But he's got one right there, and he got fouled. Holy cow, how could that be nothing? Like both of the play that 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 is a foul and there's no getting around it both players are shaken up Edwards for Texas Tech and Enoch it was the head of Edwards the top of Edwards head went into the chin of Enoch that's, that's just not legal guarding position that's a foul and I know it was with his face but it's still a foul. Turnover number seven committed by the Red Raiders. Given a zone look, but you still need to run your man offense against this because it goes back to man immediately. There's such good help with this Texas Tech defense. All eyes are on the ball. Everybody's talking, even with the young team. And they're, they're really doing a good job of getting into gaps. So they're off their man. They're not man-oriented. They're ball-oriented. So see you got all five guys on one side of the floor and everybody moves as the ball moves they, they move on the flight of the pass rather than went on the catch For Beard, a guy who has coached at literally every level in his career at one point was an assistant under Bob Knight at Texas Tech How much of Bob Knight's principles going back to the Indiana days? Do you see in Chris Beard's Texas Tech team quite a bit? And Chris wasn't with them back in the Indiana no. days, but but quite a bit, and especially with their screening action and their uh, in their motion offense. Good block from behind by Malik Williams. Boy, if Clark had gone up right away, he had that. That was a little back screen right at the free throw line. He was wide open. Williamson baseline feed. Wara rejected by Benson. Benson has been all over the place. I mean, he's been the star of this first half. Two great offensive rebounds and a very impressive block shot right there. He just plays so hard and so alert. Let's see if they can get Moretti going. Slips through a double team. Can't get the bounce. Follow, though, will go for Shannon. And again, the Red Raiders getting on the offensive glass. There is, There are no blockouts right now for Louisville. No blockouts. 
Coming up at the half, there they are. Well, there are two thirds of them, anyways. But it's the only one that counts. Yeah, <laughs> Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg. Where's the Fonz, guys? There, where's the? There's the Fonz. <laughs> the Jeep halftime report. Glad they're classing up the show a little bit with Mr. Ellis. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, his mic is open. Yeah. The Terps are on the road at contract. Penn State. <laughs> and a preview of game two tonight between the Hoosiers and the Huskies. UConn and Indiana in game two tonight. McMahon wide open. Can't leave him. Can't leave him. Reddy came off because nobody had picked up Jordan Wara at the top of the key. And one guy you cannot leave is Ryan McMahon. That is his 26-3 of the season. This is the 10th game for Louisville. Well, Ryan McMahon is one of the, like, he's a 50-50-90 he's a guy. Enoch. Boy, has he got skill. I just don't see why you don't throw it into him on every opportunity. Make them double, and then you can play through the post because he is just so effective down in the low post. Ten points and five rebounds in the first half for Stephen Enoch. He's got to call for the ball, which he does early. He gets in front of Clark, calls for it, and then turns to that left shoulder. So we've seen him make a, a right-handed jump hook and a left-handed jump hook. Just not enough. Shannon did not have enough pressure on the ball in order to discourage that pass. And he's got four inches and 35 pounds on Chris Clark. Unless Chiwa is in there, and she was not ready to help on a consistent basis, then Enoch will have a huge size advantage over whoever else Texas Tech decides to put on. And the only way you can really stop the ball from going in is putting better pressure on the basketball to, to take away vision and keep the ball from going into the post, and especially those early posts. But if Enoch continues to be this active in, in that early post, I think Louisville has no choice but to throw it in there. Two years at UConn, transferred. Now in his second year playing for Louisville, one of those fifth-year seniors. Well, he's an NBA talent. He's got size, skill. He's become more physical around the basket. And he's a, Stephen Enoch is a big reason that Louisville's got all the horses to, to get to the Final Four and win a national championship. They're not the only team, because I don't think anybody is head and shoulders above the crowd, certainly not Louisville. They're, they're very, very good, but nobody's separated. We saw Ohio State, they're very good. Kansas is very good. You and I both big fans of what we saw from Dayton out in Maui. They're very good, but you're right. Nobody has separated themselves from the herd. If you are healthy and playing well at the end of the year, you're going to have a chance. Shannon saddled with fouls early in the half, making the most of his minutes since he's come back into the game. Speaking of NBA talents. Well, Shannon just was allowed to turn the corner. That was just simple action coming off a... A little screen right around the top of the key free throw line. He was able to turn the corner, get all the way to the bucket. Nobody picked him up. That's just way too easy. Long two by Wara. Misses badly. Williamson can't save it. Little shot fake, and he would have had a wide open shot. That was another tough two. And that's a shot selection issue. And the All-America candidate is one for nine so far in this game. Little handoff and a screen at the, at the free throw line, and Williamson doesn't get over to pick it up. And all the way to the bucket gets Terrence Shannon Jr., the lefty. And going to that left hand. And Texas Tech will milk the clock a little bit with about a five-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock, which means they can take it all the way down to near zero and still have time for an offensive rebound, even a kick out if they get it. Moretti forces up a difficult shot. And it'll be Louisville ball. He still had way more time than that. I'm surprised to see him take that shot. I mean... It's not a shot clock violation unless you let it, uh, don't let it go. So he had way more time. A very smart, experienced player. Has had some, some bumps in the road here in the first half for Texas Tech. Yet they still have a three-point lead. Louisville can now hold for the last shot, just 5.2 seconds. With 5.2, you can get easily all the way to the rim off the dribble. So whether it's Fresh Kimball, he, he probably will be the one that catches it. But he can get it all the way to the rim. The color will come in for Shannon. Shannon's got a couple of fouls, so Chris Beard gets him out of there. You know, Texas Tech has this lead right now because they have played so hard in this first half. Kimball trying to get all the way to the glass, and Benson with another block. What a half he had. He's like Elijah one. <laughs> Guys blocking shots left and right. Avery Benson was the star of the first half.